Hi, I'm Norma Curran and I'm Chief Executive Officer of Values Into Action Scotland. I have around 28 years experience in employability and my introduction to supported employment was in my first role as a job coach in 1994. I quickly moved into a development manager's role at Unity Enterprise with the responsibility to advance supported employment within the organisation. Around this time, I trained in and became a TSI trainer, a trainer in systematic instruction. For nine years, I ran one of the first and most successful supported employment agencies in Scotland. By the time I left, we had a significant presence in Renfrewshire. I developed a recruitment consultancy service that successfully helped 500 plus people to gain meaningful paid employment. And as part of the equal access strategy, I developed an employment strategy for people with learning disabilities living in Glasgow. I recruited, trained and line managed a team of staff across Renfrewshire who supported people with significant learning disabilities into employment. We achieved a 50% job retention rate for all those that the project engaged with. I generated a wide range of service funding, creating a project budget of 250,000. During this time, I was involved in the writing of the Diploma in Supported Employment, achieving an Oxford Facilitators Award and became a development advisor for the qualification. I moved to France for three years and continued to be a DA for the diploma during this time. Bias recruited me in 2009 because of my employment background. They were horrified at the disproportionate unemployment rates for people with learning disabilities and or autism and wanted to do something to try and address this. Hi, my name is John Brown. I'm the Deputy CEO of VICE. I joined VICE in 2009 as the development lead to develop a three-year business development plan with the main aim to develop existing services, secure funding and develop new projects that align with my strategic plan. And during this year, I moved into my new role as Deputy CEO and I've currently project managed the BOSS project, Building Organisations to Succeed and Shine, Let's Get Moving, our independent travel project, Triple E, our job coaching service and Young Scotland's Get Talent Online. My previous employment was with Life Skills Centres over the past nine years, where I worked on and managed several projects in employability, including the Princess Trust Getting a Retail Programme, training for work and get ready for work, before moving into management posts with the Employability Fund, Modern Apprenticeships, individual training accounts across 14 sites in Scotland and traineeships and apprenticeships in the north of England. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Leo Simpson and I am a consultant for Values and Action Scotland. I joined the organisation in 2019 in July last year. I wasn't always a consultant, I joined as an administrator but I've moved on since then to a consultant role. My role within the organisation is to promote high quality training to external organisations to promote autism awareness, HR recruitment and retention alongside referral lead consultants and our co-trainers. Thanks, Liam. Thank you. So, uh, what is Values Into Action Scotland? Well, there's two things uh, that puts VIAS together. Uh, in VIAS, we do have a vision, as every organisation does. So, for VIAS, our vision is that in a, a Scotland where people with learning disabilities and their autism have the same opportunities as everyone else and are supported to achieve their goals. And we also have a mission as well. And our mission is that VIAS enables organisations to support people to achieve maximum independence, choice and control. We do this through offering quality improvement services, including evaluation, training and consultancy to organisations. We work with people with learning disabilities and or autism. So that is VIAS. So I wanted to take a wee step back at this stage because I know that there will be different uh, levels of knowledge about what supported employment is with, with people that are attending today. So apologies if you do know some of this, but I just wanted to go through what I think are the fundamental principles of good support to help people um, with, with learning disabilities and autism to get jobs. So the first part of it is engagement because a lot of people don't even have employment on their agenda, don't think it's possible, um, or 
you know, maybe have been told by others that it's not possible. So you have to find creative ways of engaging with people and, and to help them start to think about um, why employment is so important in, in people's lives and to address some of their fears as well because people will come to you with low self-esteem, maybe people around them have got low expectations of what they can achieve. It might be barriers that organisations that support them are putting up or even fear of, of loss of welfare benefits. So it's really important to engage with those people so that they know that employment should be the right and should be their aspiration, just like the rest of the population. The next step is to, to do what we would call a vocational profile or an employment plan. And, and that's not about trying to predict success or failure for individuals, but it's about trying to gather a rich picture of the person, what's important to them, what their skills are, what their interests are, and what their, their non-negotiables are in terms of looking for work. Um, and really spending 21 hours, maybe two to three weeks, getting to know the person and anyone that's important in their lives so that we can build that rich picture. And that normally culminates in a profile meeting where the what, the where, the when, and with who of the job are determined. And only once those factors are determined, do we start to think about what that job might look like for the individual and what employers we might want to target. Job finding is a dual process, but the ultimate responsibility for that work falls to the job codes. So the marketing plan will make full use of people's skills and connections, but also um, will we'll put onus on the job coach to do some of that door knocking, some of that um, you know, generating some leads and talking to employers that might not have thought about employing somebody with a, a disability before and, and might need some initial reassurance as to how that's going to work and what support won't be available for them. But I would say you're almost doing a dual profile in that you want to match the needs of the individual with the needs of an employer and each party's needs are as important as each other's. So once we've, we've made those initial connections, we do some fundamental employer engagement, which would normally start with a, what we call a job analysis, which is where we would go in and learn absolutely everything you need to know about a job um, in order to, to teach the person. It involves putting you know, hands on the task and learning how to do various job roles, and also about talking to people and finding out the more subtle things in workplaces like what is the culture like? You know, how do people talk to each other? Often your biggest learning in doing that process is not about people's job descriptions, but just about finding out the more subtle things about what happens and how it works for people. We also have a, a strong emphasis on, on using natural supports. So as job coaches, we're not in there to replace the, the people that would normally do the training and support. We're there to complement it and make full use out of it. And from all that, we would uh, create a full induction plan before the person starts that's agreed with the person and their employer. And then we would constantly review that through the, the training and induction process. So I've, I've touched on that sort of um, hands-on, one-on-one support once the person starts work in terms of on-site job support. And that's crucially important. And it's also crucially important for the job coach to fit in. So if people wear a workplace uniform, the job coach should wear the uniform and blend in. It's not about making people look different, it's about giving them the maximum chance of being successful in the workplace. Um, and, and we would do that for a period of time until we felt that we had met the individual's needs as, a, as the person learning the job, and also the employer's needs as the, the person who's learning how to include that person in the workplace. The other part of, of job support, and I'm quite passionate about, is the whole thing around aftercare. It's not about, you know, somebody gets a job and they're going to be in that job for 20 years or 30 years until they retire. It's about career progression. It's about moving up the ladder. You heard Liam in his introduction there about, you know, he's already had opportunities within his workplace. And we would think all good workplaces should, should offer those opportunities for people to grow and develop. So it's as much about that as it is about that initial learning of the job. We also 
during the training process do data collection, particularly for things where there might be a risk of safety or a risk of a quality concern or whatever, so that, that both parties and, and often parents who can be quite nervous are reassured that we're, dealing, we're, we're working on our support in a really systematic way and in a way that they can trust that we know and um, we, we're happy that, that everything is working as best as it can possibly uh, do for, for that individual and their employer. Thanks, Norma. Um, I'm going to go on and speak a little bit about Project Search. Um, this programme originated in the Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Centre in America, um, but is now delivered in, in a number of countries across the world. Um, DFN Project Search's definition of a successful outcome is competitive employment for each Project Search intern. Um, some are kind of which Norma touched on there as well. That is employment in an integrated setting that is working alongside co-workers with and without disabilities. Um, Year-round work and not seasonal employment, 16 hours a week or more, uh, and paid the prevailing wage. The programme is based on true collaboration among partner agencies. True collaboration requires a willingness among partner organisations to share resources and adapt policies and procedures. The following are active partners, so you would have businesses, education and schools, vocational rehabilitation, community rehabilitation providers, intellectual and developmental disability services, workforce investment board where available, and family members. Uh, Project Search is a business-led program. This means that the students learn relevant, marketable skills while immersed in the host business, and that the host businesses are active partners participating without uh, subsidies. The partners provide dedicated, consistent staff and on-site at the host business. The program focuses on serving young adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities and autism. Uh, braided funding is in place between all partners except the host business. Funding is a reallocation of existing resources. Funding is sustainable. And after startup, the program operates without a need for grant funding. The class sizes is sufficient to create cost-effective resource allocation for all partners. There is a total immersion of interns at the host business. That is, interns are on site at the business each program day for a minimum of six hours for an entire academic year. And for adult programs that are not tied to the academic cal calendar, the program operates for a minimum of eight months, an academic year less the school holidays. A designated representative enters program data into the Project Search database, and the Project Search graduates receive effective follow-along services to retain employment. Each Project Search program site is a licensing agreement signed with Project Search Cincinnati through the Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Centre. So, as I said earlier, when I was brought into VIAS, it was very much because I had an employment background and, and to, to see what impact we could, at that time, as a very small organisation, make on, on the opportunities that were available for young people. So when I, I started with VIAS, I was actually part-time and I was the sole employee. So in a relatively short space of time, we've grown fairly significantly. Um, but in 2010, um, because a, a parent that we spoke to was, was really uh, despondent about what opportunities were out there and, and, and trying to get information about how they could help their, their son to, to get work, uh, we, in partnership with the Scottish Commission for Learning and Disability, came up with a, an event concept called Young Scotland's Got Talent. And the aim was to inspire young people to dream big about their employment options. And in the main, this was achieved by having a catwalk event where models are young people who have paid jobs and model their work clothes. They're interviewed by the MC, who's a comedian, and this is always a showstopper. Alongside this, there was a series of employment themed workshops and a marketplace for information. The first event was held at Hamden in June 2010 and was attended by 350 young people with a further waiting list of 450 people. Feedback was that the event was amazing, but what people wanted was good local information. 
So in 2011, we began running Young Scotland's Got Talent events across the country, and to date, we've delivered in excess of 20 events, including an online event on the 29th of July. And you'll see an interview towards the end of this um, that, uh, that Liam gave um, for that event. In 2011, we uh, led on the development of a career planning tool. In, in all the different organisations I've worked with, everyone seemed to have their own paperwork and it was to match their own needs or their funders' needs. And there was no emphasis on the individual and the individual, or not enough emphasis on the individual having ownership over that career plan. So we brought in the best principles of vocational profiling and person-centred planning into one document that young people could use cradle to grave. And that was piloted by Skills Development Scotland and is still used in paper format, but we are in the process of hopefully next year putting that onto some sort of um, app where young people can have it on their phone. In 2015, we developed my video CV, and this app was designed to give people information about our training courses, connect them to our social media sites, but most importantly, to help them make their own video CV. A lot of the time I've found over the years that employers have got all sorts of strange misconceptions about um, what, what the person that's coming forward to them might be like and what, what their needs are and possibly um, imagine them to have much higher needs than actually the, the young people we meet every day have. And we thought a video CV was a really good way of connecting that employer to the individual and, and the person being able to sell themselves prior to interview. And again, we'll be uh, redeveloping that in next year in, in both Android and, and Apple. And um, from 2012 to 2015, we had a very strong presence in Highlands and Islands, Glasgow, Aberdeen, Aberdeenshire, delivering My Life, My Way. And we did um, a joint, a couple of joint events with, with Simon um, in order to promote that. It was funded by the Scottish Government. Um, uh, SDS capacity building budget. And I suppose co-productively what we were trying to do is put some of the skills and techniques of systematic instruction and other things into um, the, the, the skills net of uh, personal assistance so that we could widen the pool of people that can help people to get jobs. Because I think often people, particularly support organisations, maybe less so than PAs, but they'll say, oh, that's not my job. And you think, well, your job is to help the person gain any kind of goals that they want to achieve. And if employment is one of them, then that is your job. But it was to, to start to, to change that mindset of how people think about that. Um, and, and that ran successfully till 2015. In 2014, uh, as part of Diversity Works for You, we built a programme to build employer capacity to recruit, induct and meaningfully include individuals on the autistic spectrum. And that was, um, that was through the Autism Fund, which is why that was autism specific. But again, it's about, we know there's not enough capacity in the support to the employment world to support everyone who would want to work. So what can we do to build capacity of families, support workers, personal assistants, employers, so that we widen the pool of people that are available to support people throughout that. Um, and the other couple of pieces of work where we've just been involved in is um, with Scottish Union of Supporters Employment, where we are helping them to pilot uh, a tool to see if it helps people to sustain their employment and maybe to help them flag up issues before they become big issues so that they can talk those through with their employers. Um, and we've also recently just become part of a public social partnership to um, develop innovation in supported employment, again with Scottish Union of Supported Employment. Thanks, Norma. So I'm going to speak about a recent and current work-related activity. Um, before I do, there was some work that Norma and the team had carried out before I joined Vias, um, and she's probably too shy to say it herself, so I'll say it for her. <laughs> so uh, Norma and Elaine Adams, formerly of the Scottish Commission for People with a Learning Disability, wrote the Systematic Instruction Unit of the PDA in Supported Employment, and, uh, and Norma sat in the validation panel for the qualification. 
Uh, Norma was also invited to sit in the Scottish Commission for Learning Disability Employment Task Group that was created in response to mapping the employability landscape for people with learning disabilities in Scotland. That was research carried out by Cambridge Policy Consultants and published in August 2016. Um, Norma, you touched on it there as well about diverse, diversity works for you. That model was to ensure that people with autism could access and succeed in the modern apprenticeship scheme. And I know that there's not many other, if any, projects similar to this, even currently right now, and there's a great need for it. And the project ran successfully with various working in partnership with West College Scotland until June 2019. And 22 young people successfully gained access to the modern apprenticeship scheme. Furthermore, and more importantly, we changed the hearts and minds of employers, the educational establishment and training providers about what is possible for this group. Um, and what I'm going to talk about is some of the projects that VIAS have that are still live just now, starting with the Life I Want, uh, which is for and led by people with, with learning disabilities. It aims to improve life for everyone with learning disabilities by giving them opportunities to change the way that existing services support them and by creating and piloting new services or activities where there are gaps in support or access. The project has five work streams as determined by the service users, and they are health, relationships, transitions, employment and housing. All work streams that are similar broad activity categories, so that would be improving practice and services, piloting new services or activities, bringing people together and awareness raising. This project is currently funded by the National Lottery until 2022. The employment work stream ran a series of employer engagement events to help young people to market themselves to prospective businesses. They planned, organised and delivered these events, and little did the employers know that the person that invited them, the person that talked to them on the phone, the person that greeted them on the day, and the people who served them at the event were all young, disabled job seekers, and employers were blown away by the skills and professionalism. Young people actually left the events each time with job offers in the bag. Uh, this project was, was done in partnership with Glasgow City Council Supported Employment Service, who are also a project search site. An evaluation service also grew out of the life I want, although it is now, now a standalone service. We have the opportunity to evaluate four supported employment services, and as a direct result of our evaluation recommendations, Glasgow City Council Supported Employment Service recruited their access to work funded job coach. And East Ayrshire Supported Employment Services managed to make the business case for an additional job coach for their team. Uh, last year, Bias did some work with Empire Council Project Search and Training and Building the Capacity of a New Job Coach. And Norma touched on Young Scotland's Get Talent uh, in the previous slide. And this year, we actually managed to take it online in 2020. Um, Young Scotland's Got Talent brings together all the relevant agencies that support people with learning disabilities and, and or autism, giving advice and employment, offering fun interactive workshops where employers can learn how to connect with these agencies and what support is required to support individuals with learning disabilities and or autism and sustainable employment. The main event in the day is a fashion show where young people with learning disabilities and or autism that have interest in jobs take to the catwalk and inspire the audience with their experience of overcoming their barriers to find su sustainable, enjoyable careers. Um, the partners for this event were the Scottish Commission for People with Learning Disability, and we delivered it in July the 29th and 2020. So during lockdown, um, VICE delivered this event with some of our frontline workers with learning disabilities and or autism during COVID-19. We had nine models who were working throughout the pandemic, including frontline NHS staff and council workers. We also had keynote speakers, including local politicians, SCLD and Thera Scotland, plus interactive workshops in ScotRail, Renfrewshire Council Supported Employment, SCLD and our very own VIA staff, who delivered workshops on autism uh, and learning disability in the workplace. We also have the BOSS project, which is coming to an end in September, but we hope that this work will be carried on beyond the project. That is funded through the Workplace Equality Fund that is managed by Impact Funding Partners. The purpose of the Workplace Equality Fund is to work with businesses to address long-standing barriers in the labour market so that everyone has the opportunity to fill their potential. So the various partners this year were ScotRail, 
It was a one-year project. Uh, Vi started the project with an evaluation of ScotRail, including their job adverts, website accessibility, application forms, both offline and online, interview practices and policies in recruitment and retention. Vi supported a partner to ensure all employment-related practices and documentation were accessible in easy read format. We also delivered 14 training courses to up to 100 staff. These training courses included autism and learning disability awareness, easy read training, and HR interview selection and retention. The project was specifically targeted to recruitment uh, staffs and senior managers so that we could influence that change long term and leave a legacy beyond the project. We also offered one year ongoing consultancy as part of the project. And as it comes to a close, it looks like now ScotRail are looking to introduce the VIAS training package for all new staff that is part of the induction process. And also they look like they may partner with Glasgow City Council about becoming a workplace rotation for project search. So that would be a good legacy for the project itself. We also have Triple E, which is Elevate Equality and Excellence, which is the VIAS job coaching service. We launched this in June 2020 during lockdown to support people with learning disabilities and autism to find secure and sustain employment. The funder is the Robertson Trust, although we hope that we've got a fully self-sustainable model within the next four years. Um, the area initially covers Greater Glasgow and the surrounding areas. We have you expanding this service. Um, and the, the need for it was that it was developed as a result of discussions with local project search sites who identified the lack of good quality job coaching as one of the key factors that hinders their success. Finally, let's get moving, uh, which is the VIAS Independent Travel Project is designed to help young people with learning disabilities and or autism to acquire the skills and confidence to travel on a journey of their choice independently. The aim is for the young person to achieve a specific outcome to meet a friend on a regular basis or travel to a group activity or attend college or work. It's also designed to train local support staff in the system of systematic instruction methodology and there, thereby leave a sustainable legacy when the project finishes. So the project itself um, began as a pilot in 2017 called Let's Get Going, where it delivered to four support workers before developing in 2019 to deliver to 27 support workers and this year it's funded by Smarter Choices, Smarter Places, and we will look to deliver to 20 support workers and or family members, um, even throughout this, this lockdown period. And finally, in February, we delivered a two-day refresher course for all Scottish Project Search sites commissioned and funded by DFM Project Search. So that is the existing services. What I'd like to do is I'm going to introduce my colleague Liam again, um, and we're actually going to play an interview from Liam from the Young Scotland's Get Talent event, and he'll be available for comment afterwards. Thank you. Okay, so now we're joined by Liam. Um, hi, Liam. Hi, Michael. Um, can you tell us a bit about your job and what you do, please? I think no worries, Michael. So, um, if you guys don't know, I'm Liam Simpson. I'm a consultant for Values Interaction Scotland. I mostly deal with the training of the organisation. I co-train alongside one of our lead consultants, mostly with David Douglas, who is a lead consultant. And we deliver a huge range of products and services, such as um, such as training, like um, the Easy Read Basics, for any people in any organisation that want their documentations or paperwork to be much more accessible for the people with autism or any other disability out there. We also deal a lot with HR recruitment and retention. So we pretty much get people who, who are in the line of HR onto our calls and we give them um, just information on how to deal with people coming into the organisation. But in a HR perspective, more courses that we do is autism awareness. We pretty much just um, raise awareness for autism, just showing the benefits of what it's like to hire someone with autism, what the benefits the organisation can bring and making it more diverse and everything. So that really is what my role in the organisation is, just uh, from a, for a trainer. Uh, and Liam, how, how long have you been in this job for? Well, I started with Vias for when well, I started in Vias only as an admin assistant. So I kind of had to like work my way up mm -hmm. a little bit. 
but I've actually only been in the organisation for a year. So I actually started last July in 2019. So I've been here for a year and it's so far it's been the best 12 years of my life, I would say, working for this organisation because it is fabulous really because I'm working with people who are like myself and it is a real joy to meet other people like you, Michael, a man who's um, got a condition and he's um, and he's a journalist and he's really, he's, he's such a success in his life. I've met um, David Ross and he's become a success. Corey Blackwood, he's a success. And so much other people out there with autism who are just becoming more successes within this organisation. So it is a real joy and I love it. So <laughs> it really is a joy. So who, who can I help you uh, get, uh, get into this kind of job, Liam? Okay, so how I began it was I was with my family. We were just having a discussion about, um, so what are you going to do after when you leave high school? My initial thought was um, I was just going to keep going on with college. I did get a placement at a college for, it was an unconditional offer. Um, I was thinking, should I go for it or should I start looking for work? But So in my head, I was like, right, I'm just going to want to start making money because that is what life is all about really anyway. It all comes down to money. So I started looking for jobs online and my parents, my mum told me that why don't you look for a placement where they deal with people with autism, like look into the third sector. So I started doing a bit of research about it and I was like, do you know what, I think I'm going to do very well in this sector. So I applied for a couple of positions, but unfortunately not that much came back to me. I had the odd one or two for an interview, but I came across this organisation I was into Action Scotland and it, it looked really progressive and it looked like a really strong organisation. So we got in touch with um, Community Jobs Scotland and SUS and before before later I got a call, I think it was from Nora Curran and she agreed that I go along with her to like a conference. We went to a LinkedIn conference and she kind of observed me and how I deal in like social situations, how I deal with talking to people. That's like her idea of an interview, which I, which I quite like, like a practical interview, because it really does like settle myself down because I've got autism, instead of having like a one-to-one -one interview, which kind of might startle someone like me. So me and Norma were just going around this place, so we were just chatting away, and um, Norma obviously saw something in me, and so she called me, I think it was about a week or two later, she called me up and she said, listen, do you want to come to Vias and um, have another chat? And then before later, I got, I think it was another email or another call just saying, we would like to welcome you on board of Vias as an admin assistant. And it blew me away that, that she offered me that without, like, like the, for an interview. But it really is fascinating that she would do that for me. So I'm very thankful for her for that. True. Uh, that, that took, um, so, Liam, um, would you say that your jobs kind of help your confidence in a way? It really has helped my confidence here yeah, because um, when I was in school, I wasn't really the most outspoken of person. I was kind of like in myself, I was like a snail in a way. I was trapped in my shell. I couldn't really speak. I couldn't really do that much. But getting out and about in like Glasgow and meeting new people and doing a lot of um, complex and like working bias, it really has like broadened myself into becoming more mature like. Um, more adult, and it really has helped me a lot, and it has progressed myself. So, we, um, what would you say to other people watching this with a, a learning disability, but they are trying to get into work? What, what would you say to, to them that the best part of uh, getting a job is? The best part about getting a job, well, First of all, if it was an informal conversation, I would just tell them, well, get a job, get, 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 get some money, and then go the long way. But um, for people with autism, I would say, don't, don't be afraid, because in this day and age, we live in such an equal world and such a diverse world that they would hire anyone. So don't think yourself as a, like, that part of the circle that can't get a job or nothing. You're more than capable of getting a job. Like, Michael, um, you, you're, you're a journalist, like I said before previously, you're a, fucking, you're a big success in life. Uh, other consultants, they, they, they got a job and they turned out to be successes and I, I didn't want to be that part of there. So I convinced my friends and other people that 
you, I know you guys have got autism, but you really should start looking for a job. And they were like, um, but what about, what, what would they say about my condition? Would, would they not accept me? But no, no, that, that's not true. Because in this day and age, autism is actually a gift and a talent. People with autism, they have so much knowledge about things. Like they can be really bright and clever about trains. They can talk to you forever about trains. They can be really um, smart about stuff like finance. They can talk to you forever about finance. And if you go to a job and say, I know a lot about finance, and then they're like, well, you know so much about finance and you're autistic, but you know, come work for us straight away. So it's stuff like that. People with autism, they really are keen to work and everything. And if they are they got their mindset set on one thing, like finance or administration, offices will really want to hire you. So don't be shy. Just start looking online. 